Hello. So, watching some of the uh, help channels recently, I've noticed a lot of people asking about Lightrooms. So today we're going to go over how to make a Lightroom. It shows the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. So the very first thing I'm going to do is change from EV to Cycles. And now if I show you the rendered mode, you just have this. But there's a lot of light on this still. Um, although it doesn't look like it's lit, it still is because the environment is lighting it. So I'm going to go to Shading. If you don't have shading, you can press a plus, go general, and then down to shading. But I do have it, so I'm just going to click here. And I'm going to change from, it'll be on object when you first come in. We're going to go down to world. Change that strength there to zero. And then we won't need to touch that again. I'm going to go to, back to layout. Now in rendered mode, it is black. Material mode, it'll still look like this. Render mode, it'll be black. And that's what you want. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a camera. I'm going to press 0 on my numpad, and then I'm going to position it. I want it. Uh, I'm going to change the resolution here to 1920. None of this is essential, it's just I like to have a good view. Uh, I'm going to pick an angle where I've got some good bits like that. So that the final thing, I have nice edges hit along here and down there that I can use. Perfect, and this is that what the angle that I'm going to use. So the very first thing is I'm going to add a mesh, which I'm doing Shift A to add. Go to Mesh, Plane. Then I'm going to go into Edit Mode by pressing Tab. I'm just going to scale this up to about about here. Then I'm going to go into this mode, and I'm going to press G to move it, and then I'm going to press X so I can just move it left and right. I'm going to move it so that I have the whole line here in the background. Then I have to select up here to go onto edge select. Go over here. And I'm going to press E to extrude. Then I can press Z to just extrude up and down. I extrude that so I have a full background. Next up, I'm going to go into stay in edit mode. Sorry, I'm going to select this edge here. So I'm going to scroll out and mouse wheel around just so I can have a better look at it. With this edge selected, I'm going to press Control b which stands for Bevel. Now as I pull the mouse out, you see I get this. I don't actually need it to be that large, but I'm going to go about here. Then I'm going to press Scroll Up. And I'm just going to add in a nice load of edge loops to make sure that that's a nice curve. And I'm going to go Object, Shade, Smooth. And that will be the backdrop for our graphic. I'm going to press 7 to go into top view, back into edit mode, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to position this to be slightly better fit with the camera. And now if I go into edit mode again, uh, into rendered view, still black, and that's as expected because I have yet to add any lights. So the very first light I'm going to add, I'm going to light, I'm going to add an area light. Area light is a soft light, and I'm going to just, just to show you how I did that, I, I added it and it'll add it up there. And I'm just pressing, turning the screen and pressing G to position it where I want. So I know that I want it slightly offside, like this. And then I'm going to see, see this little black dot here, which will allow me to point it the way I want it. I'm going to point it at the character's face. Now if I go into rendered mode, it'll still be pretty dark. And this is what a lot of you have experienced when you attempt to add lights. But with the light selected, and you go down to the screen here, uh, you can actually turn it up. I know from experimenting that around about 200 is what I want for this particular um, style. Um, but if you want it brighter, you can go all the way to 400 if you wanted to. You can also slightly tint the light if you wanted. So say you were doing a, a sort of a nighttime scene, you could slightly blue it. You don't want to go too heavy or it'll start looking like that. So really light colours. And if you wanted a slightly warmer look, you could warm it up with these. Uh, if you want to go for a slightly pinkish look like that. Uh, I wasn't kidding, you really have to be light with it. You don't want to go too heavy in any direction. But I'm actually going to go for a warmish look. Like so. Um, however, you'll notice that we have some really hard shadows on these corners, which we don't want. So next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into solid mode. I'm going to 
add a uh, light, area light, and this one I'm going to bring over to this side. And I'm going to aim that again at the character. About there. Uh, I also want to scale this one up, because this is meant... Nope, no, not. I'm going to scale this one down, because I want this to be a harder light. And make sure that doesn't too badly change it. It doesn't. Good. Now, this one's selected. I don't want this one to be as strong. And I'm going to put this one with this strong blue tint. It's just because I'm checking where it is landing. And so as you can see where the blue is, that'll be where it's lit by this. And that's perfect. So I can now go back onto the white. And I still want some shadows. So if I went to go 400, you'll know it's going to mostly wash out a lot of these shadows. And now it just looks very plain. Um, if that's what you're after, then perfect. But I want to bring it down so that the main light is the one on the left. So I'm going to just keep changing the power until I get to a point where the side is slightly shadowed still. Perfect, it is. And you see we've got the shadow on the ground here as well. And if you wanted to, this would probably work on its own like that. But I'm going to add in another light. This is going to be a much, much larger light. Now to position this one, you have to choose sort of where you want the main rim lighting to be. So I'm going to position it about here. So like that. Now I'm going to click on the this part again. Aim it where I want it. And I'm going to enlarge it. I'm also going to rotate it round with R. Grab this bit again. And aim it like so. This one, I actually do want to be a very strong blue. And I'm going to just quit the random mode. And all this is doing is this slight blue outline that you can see. I think around 100 will make sense around about on this. And I think the size should come down a little, so it's a little harder. Perfect. But I do want some on the other side, so I'm actually going to duplicate it again. Bring it around this way. Perfect. And I'm going to bring another one up. Put that at the top of the head. Just a light sort of shining from behind. Now you want to adjust this to match whatever background image you're intending to use. Um, I'm not going to do that, but if you have a background image you intend to use, then yes, very much do that. You can enlarge them and shrink them as you see fit. But I think that is around about right. The next trick is now if you realize, if I go over to Film, and set the transparency on that obviously we have a background now um, so it wouldn't render as transparent the way you can fix this is if I go into if I have the this piece selected and go into the object mode I can go to visibility and click shadow catcher all this will do now is it just catches the shadows um, which if you've positioned it in the way that the um, background would fit with it you could have actual shadows rendered into your image so your character won't look like they're floating. And that is all you have to do, and it's very easy to make uh, very simple light rooms. You can make some much more complex if you want. I can have a, a lot of control over this. Um, this is currently my main light, so if I were to move this around to here, I'm right over here. Like so, then we'll have the shadow going backwards. Um, I have a lot of control over this. I can bring the shadow around as much as I like. Bring the shadow up, and if I wanted to um, tint it more, can I have as much control as I want to have? And I don't ever want a straight on light because that never looks good. But I can make it bright pink if I wanted to, but it'll just look like a missing texture. There we go, and that's how you can make a Lightroom 
and Blender. Thank you for watching.